OK? And I've chosen my data source. Okay. Not as obvious, I think, kind of a little bit confusing, but now you know the difference. By the way, just uh, in case you are using an Office 2003 or 2000 format, you'll want to choose on Microsoft Access, the little key here. This is particularly for Office 2007, this Office 12.0. Uh, and now I say next. And now, so where is my destination? Now here's your second confusing part. It would be cool if you could just say SQL Server 2008, SQL Server 2005. But it gets a little bit goofy. Okay, so you are given the choice. .NET, data work, uh, .NET Framework Data Provider for SQL Server, right? This is number one. That's our first option that we could do. Or scroll down sorry could come down here and I could choose either oh sorry the OLA DB provider for SQL Server or the SQL Server native client 10.0 so you got three choices right I mean, you know you're a first timer let's just say and you're a little confused you're not quite sure where you're going how do you know which one to go through let me tell you what was the default? Do you do you remember what the default was when I came over here and I went next? It was SQL Server Native Client 10.0. <clears throat> Excuse me. If you're keeping track of your SQL Server uh, version numbers, let me just uh, pull this up here for us. So you've got uh, SQL Server 6.5, uh, SQL Server 7.0. SQL Server 2000, okay, the world changes because we skip uh, versions by 1,993 points, but really that was version 8.0. SQL Server 2005 then became 9.0, and SQL Server 2008 is 10.0. Now, you may know that, that. That may not be new information to you. If it is new information to you, I would suggest that maybe you pause the video, write that down somewhere. That's good info. Uh, to be aware of. Okay, now back over here, the native client is going to be the most efficient way to connect to a SQL Server 2005 or SQL Server 2008 box. So this is what we want to use when at all possible. If we need to go backwards to 7.0 or to 6.5, I'm going to go with the OLEDB. I'm going to change this up. But I'm going to a SQL Server 2008 machine. I'm going to use my local instance. I assume that you already understand instancing. If not, you can go through this interminably slow browse function to go have it browse the network and return to you all of the servers that are running or that are installed on your network. I'm just going to use Learn It First 10, which is my SQL Server 2008. Uh, choose your authentication and choose which database that you want to install it into. And we're going to choose the From Access database. So this is my destination. I'm choosing the SQL server I want it to go into and then the name of the database that it's going to be put in. So I've now wired up the, the two important bits here are the source, which was Microsoft Access, and the destination. So then the last part here, or, or second to last really, is what is it that I want to copy? Now I tell it I can copy data from one or more tables or views or I could write a query the results of which would be stored then in SQL Server. Well I want to copy the customers table. So I want to copy data from one or more tables and it now says well which tables and I could choose every one of them and you notice the let's look at these icons here okay so the first icon over here in the source is a table okay so that's what the table icon looks like in Microsoft Access this icon in SQL Server that's our destination it's supposed to have like a little shiny look to it because that's impl implying that this will be creating a new table and so that's what that icon means. It means that there will be a new table in the destination created that has the exact same name. And this is something you should probably already have uh, as knowledge, but this DBO 
is the schema that it will place that particular object in in the SQL Server 2008 server. Now you'll see other things down here if I scroll down you'll see these queries these stored queries right here uh, so you see that's the icon for a stored query inside of Microsoft Access and take a look at what that's going to become in SQL Server that is going to become a new object over there as well. Now really I don't want to check everything I just wanted that solitary customers table uh, so <laughs> And it looks like they're, let's see, there we go. I had all of them selected, so it was selecting them all. Now, I could say next, next, finish, etc., and it would do the right thing. But, uh, and you can preview, and it'll just get something like the top 100 rows or however many default it is. Uh, but what I can do is I can edit the mappings. I could come up here, and if there are existing tables in the database, like you see there's one already in the database called sequence numbers, I could choose that one instead of having SQL Server create that new one. Take a look there. Uh, you notice that the icon changes because this is now saying I'm sending it to an existing table. But now what we need to do is we need to have it auto-generate this particular customers table. Now it may not uh, do that again. Uh, so uh, there we go and now you can see that it's going to be a new one. Uh, so the last little bit right here is I can edit the mappings. Um, you notice that it defaults down here to doing a mapping so that the source columns have the exact same names in SQL Server even when you get weird little things, um, generally speaking, in a SQL table, you won't have slashes uh, in an object name like a column or a table. You wouldn't see things like that. Uh, you would just have that be more of a, a postal code, would probably be the name of that column with no spaces, with maybe the P and the C capitalized. Uh, the other things that you could notice over here is that all textual data, all string-based or character-based data, was mapped to an Unicode variable character, n var car, Unicode variable character, and they're all set to nullable. This may or may not actually map what the actual data type is that I want in my SQL Server. If you're not sure, go ahead and leave it alone and just port it in there. Uh, you'll notice that the ID column is nullable, uh, is not nullable. Um, if you really want to get crazy, you can edit the SQL. And this is where you can change things like the schema. So I could change this to, uh, you know, people, uh, person, not customers. I could change that from plural to singular. I could add in a primary key here on the identity field ID. I could make it an identity column and then tell it to do identity insert. Uh, this is where you can get fancy. So this auto generate key down here, that's what basically matches it to the source. And you see how these, one final thing we'll go back, um, you see how these don't say null or not null? Well, they're going to become the default, which is null. So since they don't specify it, then the default will be that they are nullable columns. Okay. So I'm not going to change anything here. I'm just going to say, OK. So now we're going to create a new column, a new table called customers. I'm going to run it immediately. Um, I, I'm not going to worry about the saving yet, because we're going to save in Chapter 3. So I'm just going to run this. Before I hit finish, and you can see it gives us a nice breakdown, the new target table will be created. Um, let's just go over here and use the from access and select all from dbo.customers. Ah, uh, well, it's not there. Because I haven't run the package, it hasn't created that. So I come back over here and I tell it to finish, and you get hopefully all green. See that 29 rows were transferred over. That was successful. Let me say close. And now in the SQL Server, we are able to see all of our access data. And just so that you are clear, it has copied this data. If we go back into the access database, so I'm back in access now. This is the original copy of the access data. 
and if I go to the customers table here and uh, I change um, uh, let's see uh, Anna Bedex from owner to founder in the access database what's going to happen to that data in the SQL server have I just updated the data in the SQL server no, these were two independent copies, right? So we go find row number one for Anna Bedex. I guess that's how you say it here. Notice that it said owner. And when we keep refreshing it, it says owner because these are two disparate copies. We have copied the customer's access table into SQL Server. Now, what it did not copy were things like the primary keys. You'll notice down here there are no keys, there are no indexes, no triggers, they're just columns. They're all nullable except for the ID column. So we would have a little bit of work uh, if we really did want to make this work in SQL Server. We would need to go design it so that the correct columns had uh, a primary key for the ID and you know I don't want you to be nullable and things like that and then I'd want to save the table back and I don't want to uh, save that saving uh, ah, so I'd have to drop and recreate but that's the idea behind here you're gonna have some extra work to be done uh, but at least it does allow you to do that port from access to SQL Server so I'll tell you what let's do the same thing basically in Microsoft Excel in the next video